Hey, Lab, buddy, how's it going? Hey, Rob. What do you guys? Oh, look at that. What's... Oh, we got I'm ready to go. Let's hit this. Let's get this well, done. Well, actually, Rob, yeah. so there's no food or drink back on any lab. Right. And your cell phone needs to be put away. Okay. And we can't do lab without our lab coat, our goggles, the safety goggles, and gloves. Okay? So here's the list. Remember, safety first. She's so. All right, students. Today's lab is about osmosis and diffusion. We're going to be mixing solutions, but before we do that, we need to review molarity and dimensional analysis. It's not too complicated. Why don't you open your lab books and under procedure one, we'll get started. All right. Yeah, I don't understand. Well, no worries. This step is pretty easy. What are you worried about, Rob? Well, I kind of forgot what molarity is. Do you think you could explain it to me? So, molarity is pretty easy. Molarity just means how much stuff or solvent is in a solution or a liquid, right? So how much stuff are we putting in our solution? Oh, it's like lemonade. Huh? Lemonade? Well, you know, like the concentration of lemonade. It's like the amount of stuff that you have to put inside. Let me think of it a different way. Let's see, lemons or limes help give lemonade or limeade flavor. But when you start increasing that concentration, it just makes it, well, a little too sour. That's no good. And same thing with sugar. When you add a little bit of sugar, it might be good. But when you add nah, too much, then it just makes it a little too sweet. Now what you really want to do is get the perfect balance, the perfect concentration. Now for me, that's three parts lemon and one part sugar. Mm, now that's good. Let me get this I guess it's like lemonade, but I don't know about that one. Let's look at the math. To find molarity, we have to first know what molarity is. Molarity is represented as moles over liters. So moles is going to be our solute and liters is going to be represented as our solvent. The equation for molarity is represented by m equals moles over liters. Another way to think of this in a very simple way is how much stuff are we putting in our liquid. This stuff is known as our solute and the liquid is known as our solvent. Together, the solute and solvent make up our solution. If this is new for you, take a second, pause, soak it up. Wait a sec. We only have a solvent in grams and solution in milliliters? How am I supposed to figure this out? How do I know what a mole is? No worries, Rob. We just have to look at stoichiometry. Stoich- what? <laughs> what? I don't get it. It doesn't play right. Stoichiometry. I'll show you. So let's look at an example problem. Calculate the molarity of a solution prepared by dissolving 23.7 grams of KMnO4, otherwise known as potassium permanganate, into enough water to make 750 milliliters of solution. The first step to any problem is find out what the problem is asking us. What is it asking us for? Molarity. That's right. So. To find molarity, there are three easy steps. Step one, you find the moles. Step two, we need to find our volume. And step three, the grand finale, is of course to find molarity. Three easy steps. There's a secret to these steps though. We are given grams in the problem, but we need to find moles. You ask me, how do we do that? Well, my magical chemistry triangle. My magical chemistry triangle. Here we have moles, and we need to go from grams to moles. So, we are given KMnO4 as our solute. 
we look, looking at our periodic table, we can deduce that our molecular weight is 158.0 grams. We are given our grams 23.7. So, looking at our triangle, what are we trying to find? Moles. Covering up the moles, we see grams divided by molecular weight will give us our moles. So let's write this out. In finding moles, we have 23.7 grams of KMnO4 multiplied by one mole of KMnO4 divided by 158 grams of KMnO4, which it, remember is our molecular weight. So we have moles, we're multiplying grams over moles times our molecular weight. We want moles to be the last ones at the party, so we have flipped the equation so we can cross cancel. That leaves us with moles equaling 0 0.15. This concludes step one. Step two. We need to find that volume. In finding volume, we are given 750 milliliters for our problem, but we need liters. So, there is 1,000 milliliters per liter, and we want liters to be the last one at our party with moles. So, we set up the equation as follows, cross-canceling, leaving us with 0 0.75 liters. Step two. Done. And now we have moles and liters at our party. Step three, we need to find molarity for the grand finale. Remember, molarity is moles over, that's right, liters. So we already have moles and liters, we just need to find molarity. So simple, plug the numbers into the equation and do the math. 0 0.15 moles of KMnO4 over 0 0.75 liters of KMnO4. Calculation, 0 0.2 KMnO4 is our molarity. Step three, check. All right, well, I think I get it now. So I'm just gonna to try to put it all together in one long equation. So a little dimensional analysis here, start with the grams of potassium permanganate and then multiply it by the moles of potassium permanganate over 158 grams. So we flip that molecular weight upside down so it fits in our equation. We could cancel those out later. Next we are going to go with 1 over 750 milliliters of solution that we're using. That's 1000 milliliters over a liter. That's going to be able to cancel out, so there goes the grams, and now we're canceling out those milliliters, and we are left with the magic number 0 0.2 moles of potassium permanganate over liters, or molarity. Matches your number. Looks good. Oh, cool. Thanks for your help, Holly. I never knew stoichiometry could be so cool. Of course, Rob. Add that to your playlist. Now that we can do it on paper, let's mix these solutions. Alright, it's gonna be like making lemonade.